So it's that time of year, guys, when it is cold and gray outside. And it's especially dreary for us gardeners, but there are a few flowers that are in bloom right now. And I'm gonna show you some of them that are from my garden and a few from other places. And I hope that this will lift your mood. And if this is your first time here, my name is Marlene. Welcome to my home and garden channel. So the weather may be cold and dreary, lots of gray going on outside, but it's good to know that there are some flowers that give us a wonderful pop of color in this season and they come shining through for us like the kale and pansies right here. And this is a little champion. Look at how they're holding up very well. In just a few days, they were back to normal again, looking wonderful for us. Now let's take a look at this container garden right here. Isn't this beautiful? You can see we have two different colors of kale. We have a white one there and we have a red one and we have some Dusty Miller right here holding up very, very nicely. And it also has texture to it on there. Isn't that beautiful? I just love how it looks. You can see the vinca is trailing off to the side to give it that added interest. This one has a few more things in it. You can see it also has a vinca coming down there. And back to the corner, you'll see they have the maiden here grass. And they had some fresh rain falling over on here. And you can see that it still looks so, so beautiful, holding up very well. We have the Dusty Miller and the Rosemary plant right there. And just to show you my rosemary bush in my garden, that it is so large and so beautiful. You can see it has wonderful lavender colored flowers on there, blooming right in the middle of winter for me. And it also blooms in the spring and summertime too. And I'll just need to go in and clear the mulch off and add some additional one to give it that extra layer of protection. And in the spring, the hummingbirds love it. I just love to see when they come by to feast on those wonderful, delicate little flowers. So over here now, this is a larger kale. And I just wanted to zone in and show you how beautiful the leaves are. They bloom in the spring, they put up little flowers, but in the meantime, the leaves themselves add so much interest to this container. Now if you wanted to have like say a bright pop of color, you can, you know, there are many different colors of pansies that you can use like the yellow one. You can see the two-tone on it right there. We also have some red ones. You know, there are many different colors and then, you know, the standard ones that you normally see. So you have lots and lots of different options. And of course, beautiful containers also help to make it wonderful to see. Now, one of my favorite shrubs would be camellia. Some people say camellia. And I just think it is such a wonderful and attractive plant. The leaves are green and glossy. This one, um, it's the Yuletide variety because it blooms. That's what they call it because it blooms at Christmas time. And I'm sure you can see why, you know, those wonderful colors give you that seasonal feeling as well. It has the wonderful yellow in the center, but where the stamen are. This one is about three feet tall. And I'll be doing a video coming up the next few weeks about camellia, all the different types and you know, pest diseases, just different things that happen with this plant. But it's very, very easy to care for. I highly, highly recommend getting one of these. And this is one that's right by the front of my house. See how beautiful it is, this one, instead of having a single row of petals, it has double or possibly triple, you would call it. Very, very fluffy and they are very, very large. So when everything else is not flowering, they come on through for you usually in about say January or February and they're absolutely gorgeous and I cannot wait. This was two years ago and actually had an incident happen last year with them which I'll tell you about in that upcoming video. You'll see all the details but they're pretty low maintenance and I love them. Over here this is a white one. This one is a little bit of an earlier bloomer. It's more for late fall, very very early winter that it blooms but you can see how gorgeous it looks and that this one has been shaped. You know they gave it that kind of a dome shape so it has that versatility as well. And just to give you a close up of it, you can see how they're looking there. And I think the petals, they look almost translucent. Aren't they beautiful guys? Leave me a comment and tell me what you think about this plant. Next we have the hellebores and these were um, being sold during the Christmas season. This one is called Christmas Bell and I can understand why. They're so beautiful. I'm hoping to get some of these um, in the springtime and plant some of these in my garden. But you can still plant them now that the ground isn't frozen over in your area. And just to say that if you like flowers and gardening, whether they're indoor flowers or outdoor flowers, be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell twice so you never miss an upload. Over here now these are some beautiful, beautiful nandina that we have growing at the front of our yard as well. And these are the berries right here. And they're such a bright, 
vibrant, rich color of red. And I just love how it just pops up and gives you that wonderful, warm feeling. And as you can see, the berries are quite pretty, but the leaves, the leaves also add that interest because they also change colors. And I'll also be doing an upcoming video about Nandina as well. And I highly recommend them if they'll grow in your area that you could get one of these for your garden. Very, very low maintenance and they have interest all seasons of the year. Over here now we have some Swiss chard and these are very, very large. And just to show you once again that sometimes it's not necessarily just the flowers that are blooming that you plant as paired with it, but the leaves themselves. If you look at the stalks of the leaves, you can see the bright red color that is there. So that in itself adds that nice pop of color and interest and texture on the leaves as well to your garden. This one over here, um, they put the Dusty Miller as well with it. And you can see they have some Creeping Jenny. Creeping Jenny can be kind of iffy at this time of year. There's sometimes that um, they'll be able to manage, but sometimes not. And I wanted to show you the kale that I had planted um, a few weeks ago, how large it has gotten. You can see how beautiful it's looking right there. And in the springtime, this is one of the early bloomers that attract like bees, you know, our first pollinators usually. Over here now we have some pansies and I just wanted to share with you that, you know, for the pansies, typically when it gets like below 25 degrees Fahrenheit, they tend to bow over a little bit, you know, when it's cold like that, but they're going to bounce right back. And you can see that there are some seed heads. You can always take those off if you'd like to, because the more you pick off the seed heads and the more blooms that you will get. So this one is bending over a little bit, but it, it will perk right back up shortly. So it's looking quite well. You can see I have the mulch covering over for protection. But just to say that, you know, you can still plant these right now. The ground has not frozen over in your area. Once you go to your garden center and they still have them, you can just put them in a container. You don't even have to put them in a flower bed. Just make it large enough and it'll be perfectly fine. And for a step-by-step, -step, you can always check out this video. I'll link it at the end for you so you can see exactly how I did it. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned gardener, it goes into a lot of details. So you know exactly how to do it and get wonderful results. Now you may be wondering how it is that these plants are able to survive in this cold weather. And it's mainly because for most of them, they have very tough leathery leaves. So they're able to withstand the cold. Also the breathing holes on them, they're kind of sunken a little bit. And in addition to that, they also have an extra layer of wax on top of them that actually helps to insulate them and protect them from the cold weather. And they don't, you know, dry out as most plants typically would. And you'll notice like if you feel things like cabbage and things like, you know, your kale right here, they have that waxy layer on there and that's what helps to protect them. And so the pansies, though, they're a little bit more tender when you feel them, but they have special, you know, chemicals inside of them that help them to withstand the cold and to not freeze over so easily. Now, for your bonus tip, basically what you can do whenever the weather is going to get cold, you have like a cold snap coming through. You want to go in and give them a good soak like I did these in the fall because we had a cold snap coming through. Unlike humans, plants prefer to be the ones that can stand it anyways. They prefer to be cold and wet than cold and dry. So make sure that you give them a good soak when a cold snap is coming through. And I would just say, you know, you know, once you're bundled up properly, you're suited up properly, step on outside and go and enjoy the wonderful plants that are out there blooming for you. You know, they add so much interest and they give us the very best, whether we're using the blooms at the cold weather time or throughout the year, they're there for us. So I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you in your plan choices and I do hope to see you in the next video. Take care.